Okay? And a deputy executive director for operations. He was the Department of Health Central Office as its supervising health program officer. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the chair of the Dangerous Drugs Board, Dr. Benjamin P. Reyes. Thank you and uh, good morning everyone. Let's just wait for the presentation to clear up. Well, uh, the Dangerous Drugs Board is the policy-making body as far as uh, Republic Act 9165 is concerned. So, we are the, uh, all policies regarding dangerous drugs emanate from the Dangerous Drugs Board. First, we will look at global, uh, the global data, and then later on, I will be presenting the uh, Philippine, the national data. No? So if you look at the World Drug Report published by UNODC in 2015, we see that we have around 246 million uh, uh, people who use drugs in 2014. Now, that's uh, one out of 20 persons between ages 15 to 64 years old. It represents an increase of 3 million over the previous uh, uh, reporting period. But uh, despite the increase, we still consider the drug problem as stable worldwide. Again, we have 246 million drug users worldwide. And out of this number, 27.4 million are considered problematic drug users. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, this one, they have used drugs. Now, they have used drugs, but, but they are not yet considered problematic. They are not what we call addicts. No? Now, this one, the problematic drug users can be considered for rehabilitation, for in, in, inpatient rehabilitation. No? So, there's a big difference. Drug users does not require inpatient rehabilitation. On the other hand, if you become an addict or uh, you become problematic in your drug use, that means you may require an inpatient rehabilitation program. Okay? Looking at percentages, if you talk about 246 million worldwide, that's around 5.2% of the global population. No? On the other hand, out of the 5.2%, you will have around 0.6% problematic drug use. So out of the number of users, around 0.6% would be considered problematic drug users. No? Okay. Now worldwide, the number one substance of choice, that's the number one substance being abused. I don't know if you can see at the back, no? it's a bit uh, it's unclear, but the light blue line, represents marijuana use. So marijuana is still the number one drug of choice worldwide, followed by the black line, opiates. And as you can see, as far as the global data is concerned, methamphetamine or synthetic substances rank second to the last. Okay. The global market for synthetic drugs continues to be dominated by methamphetamine. The increasing diversified market for methamphetamine is, is expanding. It used to, it used to be uh, very popular here no? in, in the East and Southeast Asia, but now its popularity is growing. It's now expanding to include parts of North America and even Europe. No? So before, Europe prefer uh, downers, no? heroin, opiates, but this time the popularity of synthetic drugs are uh, reaching them. In fact, in 2013, in 2013, the highest level of seizure of amphetamine type stimulants was recorded by UNODC. 144 tons were seized back in 2011 and 2012. Now, so this, this shows that uh, there is a growing market, there is a growing trend of uh, synthetic uh, drug use. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. I uh, just wanted to show you the root no, of drug trade as far as uh, the Southeast Asia region is concerned. Of course, most of our synthetic substances are coming from what country? 
China. You all know this. <laughs> Another issue would be the number of new psychoactive substances. So these are uh, 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 psychoactive substances prepared by chemists no? and uh, being distributed worldwide. In the Philippines, you may be aware of new substances like green amore, uh, green apple, no? they mix uh, synthetic catenones, uh, MDMA, ecstasy. So they mix so many substances. Actually, according to USDA, we have around 50, 50 new psychoactive substances every week. No? So that's every week. Now the, the chart will show you the red bars are the numbers of new psychoactive substances which have been reported. On the other hand, the blue ones, no, the light blue ones, are the number of new psychoactive substances reported uh, uh, in the year, but not for the first time. So as you can see, again, the trend is increasing. Yeah? Okay. Another issue, as far as treatment and rehab is concerned, would be access to services. Uh, as far as the global drug, uh, world drug report is concerned, one female for every three males needs access to services. However, in reality, only one female can, uh, for every five males can get access to treatment and rehab. And later when I show you the Philippine data, it gets worse. Another issue is the growing number of HIV cases among people who inject drugs. Now worldwide, this is already considered uh, stable and declining. No? So as you can see in the data, in 2010, we have around 110,000 persons with HIV who are injecting drugs. On the other hand, in 2015, it was reduced, no? 98,000. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, uh, I don't know if you can see this, uh, this, this uh, map shows you the degree of the problem as far as countries are concerned. And the Philippines is still moderately high, no? still dark red. In fact, in Tapiogo, we have only nine countries in the world which uh, presents an increasing trend of HIV, of HIV positivity among uh, injecting drug use. No? Unfortunately, Philippines is one of those countries. The rest has either uh, been uh, controlled or uh, decreasing. No? So in the Philippines is one of the countries which still presents an increasing trend of HIV. And this is predominantly because of what's happening in Cebu, no? in Region 7. We have uh, a large number of injecting drug users in Cebu. Uh, most of them are using nalipine hydrochloride. It's an um, anesthetic solution. And it's being mixed with uh, liquid methamphetamine. Now let's go to the Philippine situation. In 2012, uh, DDB conducted a survey and uh, it was revealed that there was around 1.3 million drug users nationwide. No? And again, in 2015, it was revealed that there are around 1.8 million users in the country. Now, let me just caution you. Uh, there, has, there has been some attempt to, to compare the various surveys done previously by the Dangerous Drugs Board. Please bear in mind that these surveys are standalone surveys. In fact, they have different methodologies. No? They have different sampling sizes. You, you really cannot establish a trend no? if you compare all of these surveys. They are meant to be standalone surveys. No? So for example, in 2015, in 2015, the survey was conducted by a pri private uh, research group, RICS, and they uh, sampled only around uh, 5,000 individuals. And uh, they clustered the regions into three island groups, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Unlike the previous surveys which uh, use a regional sampling size, re regional sampling uh, methodology. No? And then in previous surveys also, in some of the previous surveys, 
They didn't include ARM as a region. The autonomous region, uh, autonomous, uh, region of Muslim Mindanao. Now, as part of this sampling uh, design. So you really cannot compare uh, these surveys and uh, come up with a trend. No? If you want to come up with, with trends, uh, you need to look at institution-based data. And later, I will present to you some of those data. Now, again, there is, a, there is another estimate coming from the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, which says that we have around 3 million to 3.7 million users. Now, majority of the users were males, employed adults with at least a high school education. Now, as far as the uh, 2015 survey is concerned, Visayas region has the highest number of use rate, no? and followed by NCR, Mindanao, then North Luzon, and then South Luzon. Okay. Now, uh, this is surprising, no? as far as the 2015 survey is concerned, the number one substance uh, being abused now in the country is marijuana, okay, followed by shabu and followed by cocaine. Again, this is the first time that uh, cocaine entered the picture. Previously, the number one uh, substance of abuse used to be number one shabu, number two marijuana, number three inhalants. Now, as far as the enforcement data is concerned, coming from PDA and PNP, previously the number one substance of abuse was shabu followed by marijuana, and then followed by ecstasy. Okay. However, Shabu still owns the highest share in the market and uh, is prevalent in rehabilitation facilities. So it is estimated that uh, the drug industry, the, the illegal drug industry in the country is around, the, it's around 50, uh, it's a, it's a 50 billion industry no, in the Philippines. Okay. A similar survey was conducted by the UP Population Institute and Demographic Research Development Foundation among the youth. No? And according to their findings, we have around 3.9% of ages, of youth ages, 50 to 24 years old, who are using drugs. Uh, by the way, in the 2015 survey, one third of the 1.8 million drug users are youth, no? are, uh, are uh, uh, users coming from 30 years old and below. Okay. Again, I don't know if you can see this at the back, but just to show you the trend in admissions in rehab centers. So again, these are the institutional data that I wanted to show you to, to at least if you, if you want to look at trends, this will give us an idea. No? So from 2011, actually from 2010, you can see there is an increasing trend of admissions in treatment and rehab centers. In 2015, we have admitted around 5,400 individuals in our rehabilitation centers nationwide. Most of those admitted were considered new admissions, new patients. As far as uh, relapse cases are concerned, Ayan, the trend is also increasing. But what is considerable, what is uh, a concern in this uh, graph is the fact that outpatient admissions are apparently decreasing. Now, we should have more outpatient uh, individuals coming in. Okay. Just to present to you the demographics, uh, if you look at uh, the data coming from 20 facility-based data coming uh, from the previous year, 2014 to 2015, not much has changed except for the fact that uh, the female to male ratio has now increased. No? One female uh, for every 14 males can get access to treatment that they have. Now, what's the reason behind this figure? Why, why do you think there are more